The anti-war protests in America are fired up. They're using their voice to tell the government to get them boys out of Vietnam. America had a new president that promised to exit the war. At this point, the Vietnam War was long from winnable, but if America leaves Vietnam, the South will have to fight this war without one of the world's strongest countries. Okay, look, I understand I should have not have been in Vietnam in the first place, but what can I say? I was trying to prevent communism from spreading like the plague. You know, I'm tired of America saying I was trying to spread communism worldwide. I just wanted to start small, then spread it worldwide. Plus, Vietnam and Korea both needed my help. It was a two-for-one deal. What can I say? What do you think about America and Vietnam? I mean, I understand their purpose to be there, but at the same time, it really is none of their business. Just like it wasn't any of your business to be there in the 1770s. Um, we're talking about America's inability to let things happen, not the Revolutionary War. That was hundreds of years ago. Plus, we're allies now. Are you jealous of them? No, I'm not jealous of a country that can't mind his business. Cut that out. Anyway, you know who you should ask about this? South Korea. I will answer to South Korea. Stop butting in my conversations. I am my own country, I can answer my own questions. Guys, be friends, we can't fight. By the way, I totally support you more, just go with it. Anyway, let me interrupt before it gets too violent. America was in a war that pretty much was impossible to win at this point. And luckily for America, Lyndon B. Johnson was out and Nixon was in. Nixon promised to bring the troops home, from Vietnam, but before he could, he decided to launch troops in Cambodia. With American numbers in Vietnam peaking to 550,000 men, Nixon decided it was time to bring the boys home. He saw that the war was lost and he felt the anger from Americans. So he did what was best, to bring the troops home to America. Are you ready to come home? Or well, yes and no. No, because other countries will think of us as losers, but yes, because I was really tired of losing that war. I've never felt pain like that. And you know, now I know how England felt when we whooped their asses in the American Revolution. They said what? Yeah, maybe just talk it out with them over a cup of tea. We all don't drink tea! We all don't drink tea! America did not want others to say that they ran from the Vietnam War. Because they really didn't run from it, they just left. Thank you. Talk when I give you screen time. The troops continued to come home during the early 1970s and all the troops would be home by 1973. With the troops home, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. The troops and the anti-war protesters butt heads quite a bit. Ungrateful bitches, that's what they are. I win, I fall for whatever, and I come home to dirty looks. When I returned from World War II, the people were so happy, I had 3.4 million babies. Greatest 12 years of my life. Really? What? You had a baby boom too. I mean, yes, but that's not the point. You asked me to talk, so I'm here to talk. I mean, I understand why they're mad about the draft, and they're mad about me leaving the war. No, they wanted you to leave. Shut up, this new attitude to yours is really annoying me. Did they get to you too? No, I'm just going through something. Really, this again? Look, you already had a breakdown in 1812 when you burned down my capital. I just got done with the Vietnam War and probably will have more wars to fight in the future. I need you as my partner, but more importantly, I need you as my friend. I know. Uh, well, um, I don't... Uh, just go to commercial. I, I need to figure this out. King's Island dares you to come face to face with the beast. The beast. 7,400 feet of unrestrained terror. In a 70 mile per hour attack on your senses, the beast throws you screaming through three tunnels. Takes you higher than any other coaster. Come face to face with the beast. The beast. The biggest, baddest, longest, fastest coaster in the world. So keep in mind, the Americans were coming home from 1968 to 1973, but they were still in the war throughout that same time. South Vietnam was not able to stand its ground without the United States because the North Vietnamese had the Soviet Union helping them, and there was just no way they would be able to survive. America stayed as long as they could, but it wasn't easy for any of the other countries. If you could go back and fix anything, what would you fix? I'd find Hitler myself and rip his- I meant what happened with the Vietnam War! Oh, that's simple. Prevent Archduke Franz Ferdinand from going to Sarajevo and preventing World War I. What would that change? History as we know it. Let me explain this real quick. World War I is the war that wrote this chapter of history. Like, let's think about this for a second. If World War I never happened, then the Russians wouldn't have ran out of resources. Therefore, no one need, you know, for a revolution to turn the country communist. And if World War I never happened, there would be no need for Hitler to rise and start World War II. 
And if a communist takeover of Russia would end up happening, there would be no Cold War, meaning no Korean or Vietnam War. That World War I, the history of the 20th century, would look very different. How do you feel about America leaving Vietnam? Why would you ask that? I'm thrilled. What a dumb question. Are you one of them Demi plots? No, it was just a simple question. I am happy. They should just leave the taking over the world stuff to me. I can get it done. Germany tried. Yes. They failed twice. It can't be that hard to take over the world. That's why I'm doing it. It's quite sad when you think about it, though. Yes. Yes, it is. Look, I thought I had it done, but I guess taking over the world is not as easy as I thought. Maybe I should try again. Come back to me when my plan is all set. If only, Germany. If only. Anyway, America's leaving Vietnam. But back at home in America, President Nixon was sitting behind the scenes. So Watergate. What is it? How is it? Why is it? Watergate. The Watergate scandal happened in 1972, when several burglars were arrested in the office of the Democratic National Committee, which was located at the Watergate complex. People were connected to Nixon's re-election campaign, but because of life, Nixon came out and said he and the White House staff had nothing to do with the Watergate scandal. This sounds just like something a president and the White House staff would say to cover up the fact that they had something to do with the Watergate scandal. Turns out, to no one's surprise, may I add, he was hiding the truth about the part in the Watergate scandal. The Supreme Court ordered that Nixon turn in some tapes as well. Nixon was going to be impeached. It pretty much was going to happen, but he resigned after releasing the tapes on August 5th. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Six weeks later, General Ford, or Gerald Ford, was sworn in and was a president. Not going to say he was the worst president, but not the best or good or decent. Not really even okay, so he's just a president. Earlier in the video, I was talking about the treatment of Vietnam soldiers on returning from Vietnam. When the troops arrived home from Vietnam, they were not met with parades, cheers, or a hero-like status of previous wars, you know, when they returned home. Instead, they were met with confrontations and being called baby killers, psychos, war mongolers. They basically were treated um, with disrespect. The soldiers that Americans went on home were being treated like criminals. They used science to attack the soldiers and even throw urine on them. Urine. Yes, they pissed in a cup and threw it on me and my soldiers. Look, I'm no fan of America, but no country should ever have to succumb to being urinated on. I know where America's coming from as a country who pulled out of World War I. It gets better. I promise. America, if you ever need help, I'm here for you. That was actually kind of nice of you to say. Look, I'm not evil. I'm not heartless. Just a bit misunderstood. Isn't that what every evil, heartless person says? Look, just take their pity and move on. This Cold War does not need to be a hot war, okay? American soldiers began to suffer from PTSD. At the time, it wasn't known as PTSD because it wasn't discovered really until 1980. I believe soldiers from both World Wars and the Korean War also suffered from PTSD. It just wasn't known about back then. PTSD caused flashbacks and anxiety when certain things would happen. Like, for example, if a loud bang would happen, they would think they were having a flashback from the time of the war. It also happened because of a serious car accident. That's also another example of what could, um, PTSD could arise from. Basically, it was any huge trauma that would, um, you know, cause a PTSD attack. It is given the title of a mental disorder as well. Vietnam War was a massive trauma experience for these boys. They went to a war with little knowledge of what was down there and witnessed murder and bombings. This led to an amendment that allowed 18 year olds to vote. They protest if they were old enough to go to the war and kill people, then they are old enough to vote. As part of the Voting Rights Act in 1970, the 26th Amendment was passed and voting age was lowered to 18. Since 1973, the military has been all volunteer, but Congress could indeed reinstate the draft if necessary in the future. The Vietnam War was the longest war America has been involved in until the Afghanistan War took that title. Since America left the Vietnam War, the focus, or uh, communism, uh, slowed as during the 1980s and 1990s, the relationship between America and the Soviet Union began to improve. Mikhail Gorbachev 
was the first Soviet leader to improve the Soviet Union. He wanted them to be happy and free, and he was the first Soviet leader to truly make that happen. The Cold War would end in 1991 as many of the communist governments fell, the Iron Curtain in Europe unraveled, Germany united, and the Soviet Union changed to Russia. And years of tension, nuclear threats, and governmental wars were gone but not forgotten. Now I know tension is still around today between America and Russia, but we aren't really chasing each other around with nukes anymore. The Vietnam War is still in effect, America is gone, leaving South Korea and South Vietnam to defend the country. The war's end was closer than the war's beginning, but the fight was still there. This was the war where America walks out, and the win is won for the history books.